To find the critical points and to find the intervals of increase and decrease for any given function, we're going to follow this procedure here. First, we differentiate the function, we get the derivative. Then we're going to find all the x values where the derivative is 0, basically we set it equal to 0 and solve, and find all the x values where the derivative is undefined, basically find the domain of the derivative. Once we've found these x values, these x values are the critical numbers. We're going to plug them into the original function to get the y coordinates of the critical points. If you don't have a y coordinate there, then it's not going to be a critical point. It's just a critical number without a corresponding critical point. Once you've got all the critical numbers, we can use the critical numbers to divide the x-axis up into intervals. We've got a bunch of intervals. We can pick a test point in each interval. Basically pick some number in the middle of the interval where the derivative is easy to evaluate. We're going to plug it into the derivative and see if the derivative is positive or negative on that interval. If the derivative is positive, the interval in question is an interval of increase. If the derivative is negative, the interval is an interval of decrease. So I'll finish off this lesson with doing a couple examples of this procedure. The first example, I want to find the critical points, the intervals of increase and decrease of this function here. f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x minus 10. So the first step, you need to take the derivative. Taking the derivative, we get 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. Now we want to find when is this 0, when is it undefined, so what we're going to do is we're going to factor it. We can factor out a 3, and we're left with x squared plus 2x minus 3, which becomes 3 times x plus 3, x minus 1. So f prime is 0 at x is negative 3 and x is 1. And f is undefined, never. Right? It's never the case that this polynomial function is undefined, its domain is all real numbers. So these are our two critical numbers. So we're going to try to find the critical points. To do that, we're going to plug these into the original function. So when x is negative 3, we can plug in negative 3 here. Negative 3 cubed is negative 27. 3 times negative 3 squared is going to be 27. Those are going to cancel. Minus 9 times negative 3 is going to be 27. Minus 10 is 17. So that's one of my critical points, negative 3, 17. And the other one is what we get when we plug in 1. 1 cubed is 1, plus 3 is 4, minus 9 is negative 5, minus 10 is negative 15. So those are my two critical points, negative 3, 17, and 1, negative 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those critical numbers I found, negative 3 and 1, to divide up the x-axis into intervals. So you can imagine the x-axis being here, here's negative 3, here's 1. So the first interval is from negative infinity to negative 3. The second interval is from negative 3 to 1 and the third interval is from 1 to infinity. Now we're going to pick a test point in each, inter each, each interval. So from negative infinity to negative 3, we could pick, for example, negative 4. From negative 3 to 1, we could pick, for example, 0. And from 1 to infinity, we could pick 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in each of these numbers into the derivative. So if I plug negative 4 into the derivative, I'm going to use this form of it. I'm going to get 3 times negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Times negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. This is, in fact, a positive number. Positive times negative times negative gives you positive. If I plug in 0, I'm going to get 3 times 3 times negative 1, which will turn out to be a negative number. If I plug in 2, I'm going to get 3 times 5 times 1, which will be a positive number. So because the derivative is positive here, here the function is going to be increasing. If the derivative is negative here, here the function is going to be decreasing. The derivative is positive here, here the function is going to be increasing. So the intervals of increase are this interval, negative infinity, negative 3, and this interval, 1 to infinity. The interval of decrease is negative 3 to 1.